So typically in hair grooming, the most time consuming and hardest part of the process is placing curve guides. Here I've created a simple exercise showing different potential ways you'd use to place guides. Say I want to draw a curve to connect these objects. First one would be the classic way of placing NURBS curves manually, which is obviously time consuming. Next one is to set the objects as a life surface and then to snap the CV points directly to them, which is much easier. It does tend to require some tuning though, some refining. Obviously you end up rebuilding the curve. Now this one is the classic one we usually use, which is growing a guide curve out of a scalp, in this case represented by the plane here. And you just brush it into place. It gets the job done, but it's extremely time consuming and requires a lot of back and forth and you constantly have to rotate the camera. Since we're inputting this with a tablet, which is a 2D surface, it's much harder to see into 3D. Since the input is in 2D, but the medium is 3D. And that's where VR comes in. I discovered this plugin called Marui plugin for Maya, which allows you to use VR directly in Maya, including drawing curves and CV points in 3D directly while having Z-depth awareness. You can see how efficient this is compared to a mouse or a tablet. Here they're showing how fast it is to place a rig inside of a model compared to a mouse or tablet. And VR just ends up taking way less time. And of course, recently Maya came out with the VR app for Maya 2022, which has a similar feature where you can draw curves directly. I've been using Maru since that's what is supported on my headset, which is the HP Reverb G2. This Maya one currently supports the HTC Vive and the Oculus devices. But here I'm back in Marui, which is what's supported for my headset. Look how fast it is to create this here now in VR. I don't have to set the objects as a life surface for this test and I can just directly draw the points in the objects. It's extremely accurate and I have depth awareness that I can't even explain. You have to try it yourself. You can't see it on the studio monitor you're watching this on. I'm able to tie knots in VR, which is something that's really hard to do in any other software this fast. This becomes super useful when you're drawing a very specific curve and you want it to go in and out of the screen. And that's the Z-depth awareness I'm talking about. You're able to go in X, Y, and Z, which is not possible with any other tool. And what you just saw was the preform curve tool. And previous to that was the specific point placement tool. And you can use either of those tools to get the curve I want. This one is the freeform and you see I'm drawing into the screen. You'd have to try it out yourself to see what I mean. It feels incredible. Like you can reach out there and grab it. You can even draw curves like you see here very accurately around an already existing curve. I'm able to transform things around to use brushing on it. Same you'd see in ZBrush or an Oculus Medium, for example, if you're used to using that for sculpting. Here I'm using this head from Wrap3D Software, and I'm showing the other ways you can approach drawing these curves by using traditional curve tools and setting the object as a live surface and then drawing on top of it, snapping to it exactly, which is still a legitimate way to work and is extremely accurate, but it feels less natural and it takes way longer, I found, when compared to the VR method. And it takes a lot of tweaking just to make even the most basic curves. Their trajectory in Z is very hard to do when you're drawing with a 2D surface and viewing the curves on a 2D surface, which is the screen. And notice how sometimes I have to create a straight guide and then I have to bend it. By using interpolation on areas that I already have guides created in, I'm able to quickly generate similar guides. But as you see a curve like that, I would still have to move it away from the surface once I draw it. It's still a really good way to work, but I will show you the alternative. Some more traditional placement there. Set the object to live surface. Draw on the scalp to generate the curve. Push it out with the brush once it's converted to action and guide. And here I'm drawing using paint strokes tool. 
And then I'm converting them to NURBS curves. Then I'm centering the pivot on the root point and then I'm pushing them away from the surface. You can check this out in a previous video I've done where I covered how to create fur using this technique. I'm also using this on a human here at the back of the head just to quickly get something. Still a good way to work also. You see the constant tweaking needed to even get the most basic of curves. I will show how this is so much faster to create in VR. See right there I created a straight curve and then I had to bend it back towards the head. And even copying and pasting curves is an extra process you have to do. I feel like it really interrupts the flow when you're starting out your block in. I mean it's not the end of the world, you can still use it. But the natural evolution of things is to just do this in 3D to begin with. You see the freedom I get here? And with a single stroke, I'm able to do the exact same thing I did with the other model, that stroke that goes behind the ear, also the one that goes on top of the head. So much faster than the other way. And by the way, I'm speeding up these videos at the same amount. See here, I'm able to create different vectors coming out of the same point in the back of the head there. Doing multiple trajectories really fast because I can see the Z dimension, the Z axis. I still have access to all the other tools. I can delete curves, restart, keep going, get, get in there, get more precise. It allows me a high degree of accuracy, but also a lot of speed. I see how fast I can get this stuff on her face. Still have access to brushing if ever I made a mistake. It can also undo, you can delete, you can do whatever you want but the placement is so much faster compared to any other tool I've seen. I'm able to change my mind about certain placements. You have access to every tool you would get with XGen or any other grooming software. Go in there, delete curves, just to show you a different type of style, different type of hair here. I can do curly hair. Obviously you can create this in a more uh, procedural way with uh, your grooming tool of choice. You can run a curl on a straight hair, but I'm just showing it here as an example. You can also mix different hair curls together, which would be extremely time consuming to get any other way via procedural ramp uh, controls that you get next gen or any other tool. But here I'm able to just vary the exact curliness I want and I can tighten it up and spread it apart and make it straighter. Just a lot of control. You don't necessarily always have to use the freeform tool to draw these curves. You can use the specific point placement tool as you see me doing here, which offers you even more accuracy. And you can change your mind about placement much faster without using the brush. You can have access to specific points. You can move them on the fly without having to go in a different mode. You can just hold the modifier key, which is Alt on the controller. And here I'm comparing both tools being used. I can play around with the points, the CVs being placed without having to exit the mode just by holding a modifier key. I can get the same thing but with even more accuracy, but I can also switch back to the freeform tool. You get a lot of versatility this way. Jump it back to some curve placement. Here I'm doing a version of what long hair would be like. I can get a quick block in of different types of waves there, some curls, tighter, looser, mixing it up really fast without having to use ramp controls which is what you do with procedural curls in XGen, for example. And here I'm showing how you can determine the distance from the scalp by the clipping of the actual tool. And I can get it closer to the surface and I'm able to determine where the actual scalp is. And then I can draw my curve. You can also rebuild. And I can use the brush tools. Use the point placement tool. Look how I'm doing a continuous stroke and I'm rotating the camera without having to be snapped to one surface.
using brushing, applying the brush to a single curve. Just jumping back and forth between all these tools, the same way you do in action, except I'm able to create the curves much faster. Now here in exit the VR mode, take off the headset, go back into Maya, convert these curves into action. It looks exactly as you expect, and you just can continue working from there. Except now you've just sped up the initial block end process significantly by using VR instead of using a traditional way of placing the guide. Now with hair generated on this, I can play with the modifiers, same as you'd expect with any other workflow. Now it can get in there and refine. And now that most of the surface, at least for this test, is covered with guides, I can go in there and place new guides that will interpolate based on the previous placement of the other VR curves I've placed. I can take that interpolation and then modify it, reduce the CV count, and continue working from there using the traditional action tools. But at least I had a solid base, a fast start using VR. Now here comes the issue of how would you use this with a reference images workflow to match the already existing concept or photography to create a digi double or something like that. I haven't used this in my Roy, but it looks like it's possible here in Maya as you see. Definitely something I will explore in the future. This is just a proof of concept video, but the process shows a lot of potential there in Maya's VR implementation and it's worth exploring. An alternative to having reference images in the VR environment, you can just create a proxy mesh here. I've created one on top of this ZBrush standard model. And this would be something you could maybe create from reference by lining up the model to image planes and creating the proxy hair that way. And then using VR, you start placing the curves directly inside that volume. Inside of it or on top of it, you can line it up however you'd want. But you see the speed of generating those curves here is just something I've not seen in any other process. I can still brush them, tweak them. And what I'm seeing is inside the mesh using X-ray mode here. I can use the point placement tool to get more accurate, go around the mesh. This is similar to the snap to surface method. So you can always use that hybrid workflow. You can also just eye it around the volume, but at least you have some sort of volume indicating what the original image planes you traced from looked like. Like when you're creating a digital double groom, for example. This way you can get the best of both by getting your proxy mesh based on image plane reference, by lining it up accurately, and also get fast curve placement that way too. This hybrid workflow is showing a lot of potential I'm finding. Continue placing some of the curves here. I'm using the point tool here because using the free form I wouldn't be able to draw a stroke around the bottom undercut of this model right here. Then I check the x-ray mode to see how far along I am and all you'd be doing in VR is just creating those initial guides really fast so you can have something to interpolate from later when you jump into your grooming package like Action or Onatrix or Houdini. I find this to be a much more artistic way of placing the guide curves and just generally more efficient. As you get to think more about the 3D volume of it, as you see things in 3D in the headset, and I cannot emphasize that one enough for sure. More inside of the mesh volume placement there. Drawing the guide and tweaking it. The ability to see this, especially at this part in 3D stereo has been incredibly helpful. I'm exploring also setting up shortcuts so I can access some of these tools here. I'm constantly toggling between much faster. This is still early testing. Now in the proxy mesh, this part at the back here looks a little bit wavy and there's some lumps there, but I'm just doing a quick one here just for the video. But I would go in there with more detail if I was doing it for real. And here the same thing as last time, I take these curves and I convert them into X-Gen guides. The VR plugin Marui already creates them as NURBS curves to begin with. Conversion is done, I can preview it in the action groom, look at the final hair, and then start interpolating from there. Add more, refine, finish up. This has been incredibly exciting to test out. I recommend you give it a try. Thanks for watching.